It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who's my dear colleague and friend, uh, Serge Van Gessel. Serge is um, a geologist by training from Utrecht University. Uh, why didn't you study at Delft? Serge? <laughs> 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 I'm joking. It's, so he's currently a senior geologist, a geoscientist, and advisor at TNO <coughs> Geological Survey of the Netherlands, where he informs and advises national and regional authorities on geoenergy applications and the use of the subsurface in the energy transition. He also coordinates Task 42 under the umbrella of the IEA Hydrogen Technology Collaboration Program, which focuses on global collaboration on underground hydrogen storage. And we all know how phenomenal his contribution in this task force was through the past two years or so. He has been constantly working on this. And finally, there was a report, a technology monitoring report that was published thanks to his, his great leadership and coordination of this whole program. So, Serge, you're all looking forward to hearing what's this IEA TMR report. And please welcome Serge to the stage as well. Thank you, uh, Hadi. Um, well, and, 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 and of course, thanks to all who have contributed because it's, uh, yeah, I just had to uh, guide it a little bit, but uh, the contributions and the content is uh, really uh, by the community. Um, and I would like to especially thank all the subtask leads that work so hard on each of the chapters. Uh, there's a lot of them, and uh, yeah, they are acknowledged also on the report. Um, I'm going to talk about um, the IA uh, 40 Task 42 program and a little bit about the, 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 the report that we established. Um, and I think it's also nice, and, and I would like to thank Hardy uh, for his great idea that he brought up in the early days of the task when we were still in the development phase, and you proposed uh, this summer school, and I think it worked out so well. So it's nice to be here for the second time, and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, how this continues. Um, a little bit about TCP, the Technology Collaboration Platform that is uh, by IEA, um, and this is the hydrogen technology collaboration platform there are many of those there's also greenhouse gas oil and gas EOR whatever there's a lot of e uh, TCPs but this one is on hydrogen and it's not on hydrogen storage only it's about the entire hydrogen value chain how can we accelerate and advance this technology challenges uh, that will help us establish uh, hydrogen in a safe and responsible and efficient way there's a lot of countries, uh, sponsoring parties, uh, who are contributing to this, uh, to this TCP. Uh, already existed since 1977, so 40, more than 40 tasks have been uh, started and uh, uh, established on different parts of the value chain, and a lot of experts are involved. Um, we, as Task 42, started in uh, 2021 with the developing the task, so it was really about bringing the community together, and I thought we, we, we were going to end up with some 15 parties, maybe 20, um, and currently we're with 56 uh, across the globe, and that's, uh, I think, uh, I'm very happy with that contribution. Uh, there's universities, there's industry, there's uh, uh, also governmental parties, research institutes, and I think that connection is vital to the establishment of uh, hydrogen storage. Um, I, I wanted to look at it this way it, it, it's like we're we're, we're creating or, or establishing the dna for underground hydrogen storage and uh, uh, like dna it evolves so we're evolving this technology bringing it to maturation um, and uh, a dna is is connected with a lot of different parts and they have to interconnect and there's a lot of things that need to be resolved and need to be done uh, so this is something uh, i think we're we're, we're aiming for um, you cannot uh, just take out uh, one part and then hope that the DNA will survive in a, pro in a proper way. We have to do it uh, together with all these disciplines uh, integrated. And I think that is also what Hardy here uh, told. And uh, the report that Hardy already addressed uh, is, uh, let's say, a first step. Uh, there have been many steps, but it's, it's for our task a first step to really sketch the, 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 the blueprint of that DNA. And now we have to evolve it further. And that's something we are doing in the next years. Now, how can we look at, at underground hydrogen storage? How do we look at it? Um, it, it? It's an integrated way of looking at it, I think. And, and the one thing I think that, that, that drives a lot of us here is the geology. It's the geology behind this technology. And 
we have three subtasks focusing on, focusing on different aspects and uh, the one uh, subtask A is, is uh, very much focusing on uh, the microbial and geochemical processes and I think that is very much under the attention of, of this technology. Uh, the second thing is does the hydrogen remain where it is and if we inject it and take it out at high cyclic rates uh, will the reservoir and the seal stay intact? Is it safe? Does it stay where it is? And the third thing that is very important here is, uh, is, is, is the storage performance. Can we, can we have an economic and, and efficient performance, but also uh, where can we find the proper sites and how do we rank them? Uh, the second level is the tech, let's say more the engineering part, and that is really about the surface facilities, the wells, everything that is connected to the subsurface, and how do we establish that? How do we engineer? underground hardening storage and that's a lot of challenges about how do what kind of materials do we use how do we set up the oper operational parameters of a project etc and then that has to connect with the broader uh, energy system uh, energy system um, uh, perspective the energy system is uh, let's say driving the demand for storage uh, we don't develop storage just because of the storage but it has to connect with with system uh, system uh, demand. And finally, I think one of the most important things as well is 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 it socially acceptable and, and can we do it in a, in a responsible manner? So what are the impacts? Uh, do we have the proper regulations, etc.? And that is our final subtask, subtask F, which looks at the social embeddedness of this technology. Um, the targets that we are using for underground hydrogen storage are quite similar to those that we have in uh, uh, also for underground gas storage and uh, several other technologies like uh, CCS. Um, but we have different screening criteria. Hydrogen is, is having uh, different uh, properties and uh, we have to investigate how this uh, matches with uh, porous media, uh, caverns and, and, and rock caverns. Um, we have to integrate a lot of experiences and that is uh, uh, especially for the porous uh, reservoirs we we have to investigate a lot of uh, geological environments where it can be done uh, it's not like it works here then it works everywhere we have to test a lot of different uh, situations and also i think it's important that we have a really a good grip on uh, let's say the, um, the quantification of coupled processes so we we may focus on, on single processes, but we have to really f look at it in an in a integrated way. How do these processes interact with each other? And do we have the models and validated models to, to uh, assess it? Um, underground hydrogen storage has, has quite similar requirements and designs as, as under underground gas storage. So that, that's a technology we're quite familiar with. Um, but we have to investigate how we have to, let's say, redesign these components in the, in the energy system or, or in, the, in the facilities and, and uh, how do we do the processing. Safety and monitoring, and especially monitoring, is one of these key topics, I think, that, that needs uh, a lot of attention and that is also uh, identified in our report. Now, the technology, uh, where does it stand in terms of technical readiness? Uh, well, we're really advancing to piloting and demonstration on, on, on many on many sites. Uh, that differs a little bit for salt caverns. Of course, uh, storage of hydrogen is already done for a lot of years in salt caverns, but it is really focused uh, more on a static uh, ap application, uh, local, locally uh, implemented for industry purposes. Uh, but we want to implement hydrogen storage in a very dynamic energy system that is still also evolving. Um, so that is, I think, an important focus that we need to uh, need to understand how we can can implement it in the energy system setting. And of course, for porous media, we have to do a lot. Uh, we have a lot of experience from town gas, but the operational settings and also the quality requirements, etc., are quite different. So we are going for pure hydrogen here. Um, if you look at pilot projects, uh, the, the previous speaker already indicated that there are pilot projects ongoing and uh, I try to make an overview here of uh, well, what we uh, noticed as 
projects that are investigating pre-feasibility of, 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 of this technology or already are in a feed stage or even uh, doing first pilots. Uh, and then we can see that a lot of uh, cavern projects are, are in, in preparation, uh, especially Germany uh, really uh, comes out here. Uh, I do want to <coughs> highlight, of course, the, uh, uh, the first operational demonstration or pilot project in Austria, uh, which is uh, going to inject pure hydrogen. Uh, and um, yeah, also, of course, uh, we have some experiences with uh, a town gas storage, which is a mixture of, of hydrogen and several other gases. But still, we are really at, at the first stages of, of developing this technology. Um, the potential for storage, at least the theoretical potential for storage, is huge. And I think that's also addressed by the previous speaker. We have uh, several studies that have indicated uh, what could be the potential either in existing underground gas storages that we can refurbish to underground hydrogen storage, or investigating deple depleted gas fields or un unexp still unexplored aquifer systems. And of course, also uh, uh, salt caverns, which are especially uh, in in northern part of Europe very, very, very uh, prominent uh, uh, as as a, as a potential resource. But still, we have to have to realize this is uh, only the theoretical and maybe even eff uh, effective uh, capacity. It's not yet the practical capacity. We have to do a lot of spatial planning and see where we can really uh, develop this, this technology uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a responsible manner. Uh, what are, for example, service restrictions or where do it, does it connect with the uh, demand in the energy system? So before we are actually at this top of the triangle here, uh, the uh, matched capacity, we still have quite a way to go and how much will remain then? Uh, the demand for storage, uh, well, that, that is a big puzzle, I think. We have to uh, still still work out how much storage will be required, but you can look at maybe comparable uh, experiences from underground gas storage. In Europe, about 20 to 30 percent of the total annual demand of uh, gas that we use is uh, in a storage and over the past year we have seen the importance uh, there that uh, that we have that storage because we have also a filling requirement uh, right now to to make sure that we have supply of natural gas the same situation could come for for hydrogen uh, where we need to re rely on, on 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 the supply of hydrogen and storage is going to be important so if you take more or less the same uh, same figures that we have globally and in and, and, and Europe, we could come to a higher, uh, even higher volume, storage volume for hydrogen than we have today for natural gas. And that's a big challenge to to really establish that in time. Huh? It's, it's not only that we have to have that, that volume, but we should also realize that we have to establish that volume maybe over the next 20 to 30 years. And that's that's quite a, a, a huge challenge given the long lead times. And uh, it's not only a technical challenge, uh, we have to uh, make sure that this uh, development is going to happen in a societal environment. And what you see here is, let's say, uh, two axes, and it's going to be also presented in on Thursday, uh, where we are trying to move up in the technical readiness level, and r the ladder, trying to get this matured in technical economic uh, perspective. But then next to it, we also have to move on the societal embeddedness level. So we have to be ready as a society, society to accept this technology and to embed it in our system, uh, deal with the environmental impacts, if any, uh, deal with, uh, make sure that the regulations are in place and uh, also that we have the right communications with all the stakeholders. And that is still a thing that needs to mature uh, and has to be, let's say, at the same in a balance with the technical uh, development. If you don't do that, you have something that is technically ready, but still socially not uh, really accepted. Then you will have a lot of delay in your development. That's at least the experiences we have here also in the Netherlands. Finally, my last slide uh, is, uh, yeah, is some of the key messages that I would like to uh, bring from the report. There's a lot of messages in it, so read it. I'm not going to uh, uh, 
go through all the 150 pages uh, that are included. But still, I think some key takeaways here um, are that we need to increase our confidence in, in this technology. We need to increase the confidence that we have in the geology and in, in how it works. And we have to do that with a lot of uh, ex uh, experimentation in the lab. We also have to do that with pilots and demonstration, and we have to integrate integrate these insights from different uh, geological environments. That, that That's crucial to understand how it works. A second thing is that we have to develop a market for it. There's no market for hydrogen storage yet, but we have to pilot and demonstrate, uh, let's say, through it to get more experience. So that's a challenge. Um, we need to also develop a regulatory framework for markets, uh, uh, regulating the market and uh, develop uh, the, the business case. So that's a challenge that has to go uh, uh, parallel with technical development. We have to improve and validate methods uh, and strategies to assess risks. And this is also important. Monitoring is playing an important uh, role there. And finally, as I said, we have to assess the uh, the societal embeddedness of this technology. Uh, without societal acceptance, this will be a really, really tough uh, challenge for us to uh, to uh, to reach. Um, and with that, I would like to uh, yeah conclude with my talk and uh, thank Hadi also for the invitation. Thank you very much, Serge. Questions for him? Yes, please. It will take a few seconds until I bring the microphone to you. Mention your name. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, this is Anais Gul, and I'm a PhD student at the uh, University of Naples, Italy. Uh, my question is uh, related to storing hydrogen underground in depleted gas reservoirs. And uh, one common thing we know that uh, hydrogen is very much reactive and it's not uh, available as a free molecule. One always has to extract hydrogen from water or any other substances. So uh, keeping this in mind, so when we are speaking of storing hydrogen in depleted gas reservoirs, so many studies have already mentioned that its infrastructure cost on a cost more, that is around 15 to 25% more. And when we are speaking of the infrastructure cost of underground uh, different uh, equipments like tubing, casings, and different underground uh, equipment, subsurface equipments, it cost is in millions of dollars. And the same thing goes for the uh, surface storage uh, because when we are actually producing hydrogen, we are not gonna uh, place the hydrogen in the same container uh, like the where we uh, used to store the natural gas because again hydrogen is very much reactive so in its infrastructure cost is very much higher so my question is what's your take on uh, tackling this uh, challenge uh, how how we're gonna uh, minimize this challenge in future yes thank you it's a very important question of course had the, the, the economy and, and let's say the, 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 the economic uh, aspects uh, the, what is the capex uh, the, the, the cap capital expenditures to to develop a storage uh, uh, where uh, for example the the, the cushion gas is, is is one of the key factors but also uh, the processing and and if we go to more the operational expenditures uh, what is required to to clean the, the gas and and to to make let's say, to, to the standard set that is required in the energy system. Um, this is uh, one of the, the challenges that we are facing in, in to really make a very yeah, a, a reliable cost estimate. And it's uh, investigated in, 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 in several of the European projects uh, that were also mentioned by uh, Nicolaus in the previous talk uh, to really address, let's say, the cost, uh, to the establish the cost models. Um, and we have to connect that also with the, uh, with, with the revenue model. So, it's a big challenge, uh, and, and, and indeed, how can we reduce the costs, and where are really the uncertainties in the cost model? Um, I do not have the right answers here, uh, concrete answers yet, but I think that's, that's a challenge we have to pick up, and, and doing that, let, let's say, with the industry to, to really see where, uh, where are the key uncertainties in, in, in development and operation, and, and how can we, can we minimize those, those costs. Yeah. Thank you. Any last Question, please. Hi, Serge. Uh, I'm Rahul Fonseca from Adnoc. Um, so I looked at your uh, your last slide with the four points, and you 
you know, one of the things that uh, troubles us uh, in the industry is the lack of standards mm -hmm. when it comes to hydrogen storage. How is a task force like yours going to tackle that? Yeah, we are uh, looking at, at, we want to look in, 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 the, in, in, this in, in the second phase also at, at what kind of standards are there. Uh, you can look at, at different standards, of course. Uh, one of the, the topics we're, we're looking at is, is standards for experimentation. Um, can, can if, if you do all these kind of experiments, uh, do we have the same standards of, of assessing, uh, let's say, what is happening in the subsurface, monitoring, etc.? That's one part, but also uh, standards that, that are required for, let's say, for a regulatory system perspective. Uh, so what kind of standards are there out there in, 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 in the different countries? What is, what is currently being used? And what you see often now is that, that there are a lot of standards for, for example, gas storage. Uh, how do we assess them uh, in terms of, of their applicability for hydrogen and what needs to be uh, adopted or, or let's say changed. This is something we, we want to look at. Um, it of course has to be done uh, also in, 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 in the national jurisdictions. Uh, every jurisdiction ha may have its own uh, regulations there. Uh, but we want to try to make an overview of that. I That's one of the challenges. Qu uh, quick question online as well. They're asking about the uh, different or heterogeneous economies in, in the world. So there are developing countries mm. that would like also to enter green energy. Yeah. And for them, infrastructure and finances is not as, let's say, convenient <coughs> as it is in different places. How should they see themselves in the priority to move into hydrogen? Um, I think one of the things we have to realize is that hydrogen storage uh, can play a very different role in, in different situations. Uh, are we talking about like uh, Europe or the Netherlands where we really use hydrogen as, as, as something to balance the system or are we using hydrogen as an ex uh, uh, let's say something to support the, the, the production and the export? Uh, for example, in Australia and in other so several countries in the world are, are really going to be key exporters there. Uh, but storage, again, plays a role. But it has maybe a different uh, profile uh, in how it is being, uh, mm -hmm. being operated. We should share that knowledge, I think, and, and, and see how it can work in different environments uh, and not, not just that one narrow environment that we're maybe looking at in the Netherlands or yeah, in yeah, Europe. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. So let's thank Serge one more time for this uh, very nice... <coughs> These are all excellent questions for the debates and panels that we have uh, through the program. So uh, take a record of those.